this time a little bit of a more in-depth look at sodium. Now, sodium has 11 electrons, which means that the first shell is full, the second shell is full, and there is one electron left over which has to go into the third shell. And that's the ground state of sodium. But all sodium atoms don't have to be in the ground state. Some of them will acquire some additional energy from somewhere, and that will result in one of the electrons moving up to a higher energy state. These are known as excited states. And atoms in excited states often give up their energy by releasing it into some other form when the electrons move down into the ground state. This I've labelled as the first excited state, although of course there are a large number of ways in which the electrons can be arranged in a sodium atom. In this atom I've shown a few states and the occupancy of them. None of these is in the ground state. The ground state of this atom would have two electrons here, two electrons here, and two electrons in this lowest energy state here. So these are all excited states of this atom. Put them in order, descending order of energy. Pause the video here if you need a bit of extra time to think. Okay, well the first thing you might notice is that C clearly has more energy than A, because the only difference between A and C is that this electron has moved up here. That would be an increase in energy, so C has greater energy than A. B, however, has greater energy than either A or C, because B is the result of an electron moving up a long way from this state down here up to this state up there. That is a greater difference in energy than moving an electron from here up to here. So B has a greater energy than A. It's also a greater energy than this electron from here to here and this electron going from there to there. It's further up the energy curve. So despite the fact that B has no electrons in this top orbit at all, the total energy of atom B is greater than atom C or atom A. So in descending order would be B, C, A. Here are a few excited states of sodium. The ground state and the first excited state we've seen before, but there's a more excited state here. And you could even get one of the shell 2 electrons jumping up to shell 3 for a very excited sodium atom. Now, I promised you some evidence that all of this theory about discrete energy levels is correct. And some of this evidence comes from a sodium low pressure vapour lamp. Now, a low pressure sodium vapour lamp works by having effectively a, a gas, a vapour, of sodium atoms floating around. There aren't many of them, that's why it's called a low pressure sodium vapour lamp. And you put an electric field across the sodium vapour, a large electric field, which causes electrons to leap across the gap and attach and sometimes knock electrons off these sodium atoms, which then move to the next sodium atom, and so on. Now, as these electrons hit sodium atoms, they give the sodium atom a lot of energy, and that results in some of the electrons in the sodium atoms jumping up to higher energy levels. So if I have a sodium atom in the ground state like this, it might be hit by an electron which knocks an electron up into a higher orbit, or an even higher orbit, and so on. And these excited sodium atoms will then lose that energy when the electron drops back down to a lower energy level, a lower energy orbit, if you like. Now, when an electron does that, energy has to be conserved. 
and that energy leaves the lamp in a photon of light. Since we're going down from this excited state to this ground state as a result of an electron moving from this energy level to this energy level, so if I draw it out here, first shell, second shell has eight electrons in it, third shell, I'll expand the scale, has one electron in it, but this electron in the excited state might drop down to here, that would result in an electron losing this amount of energy, the difference in the energy of the two shells. So that's the amount of energy that would have to leave in a photon. Well, if we know what the energy of the photon is, then we can predict the colour of that photon. And if all of the photons emerging from this lamp are due to electrons moving from this orbit to this orbit and losing the same amount of energy, then all of the light emerging from the bulb should be at a single wavelength. It should have a single colour. And we should be able to detect that by looking at the output of a lamp on a spectrometer. And if you do that, you see this. Well, most of the light does come out at this one wavelength, this one colour, this yellow colour, quite familiar to people who drive under sodium street lamps. However, there are some other weaker bands of colour as well. Where do they come from? Well, red light, the photons of red light, have less energy than the photons of yellow light. So that would suggest that the electrons causing that red light are not jump jumping down as far. And they're not. There's actually another energy level in here in a sodium atom. And it's possible that some of the excited atoms have electrons up in that orbit. And if they just jump down to this orbit, they are not losing as much energy as this electron is jumping down to here. So this might cause a photon of red light with a lower energy than the yellow light. Similarly, the green and the blue, they are due to much greater energy photons and a electron jumping from here I say jumping, falling might be a better description, an electron falling from this higher energy orbit to this lower energy orbit is giving up a greater amount of energy than this electron would. That would result in a higher energy photon being emitted, which might be a green or a blue colour. But you will always only get photons with the amount of energy corresponding to the difference between these discrete energy levels in the sodium atoms. So there's only a certain small number of different colours of light you can get out of this bulb. And that's exactly what we're seeing on the spectrometer. It's very good evidence that those predictions from quantum mechanics are actually correct. Next time, we're going to start thinking about what happens when you have more than one atom. You have groups of atoms collected together in a crystalline lattice, actual blocks of solid material.